math lesson seven, adding and subtracting whole numbers. Now, most of this lesson should be review from previous years, but review is never a bad thing, and there may have been some things you will have forgotten. So listen carefully while I go over some important points about adding and subtracting large numbers. And then I'm also going to go over how to do the few tricky questions at the end of your lesson today. So let's start out with adding two numbers together. Whenever you add two numbers together, it is always very important to start in the ones place. So you start on the right hand side whenever you're adding or subtracting numbers. And all you do is you take the top number and you add it to the bottom number. So we simply do one plus two gets us a three. We put a three at the bottom. Then we do five plus nine. Now, five plus nine gets you a number that is larger than one digit. It gets you a 14. So what we do with that is we take the four from the ones place and we put it down below the five and the nine and then we carry up the one to the next column. Okay, so when you have two digits, make sure you put the ones digit down below and then you carry up the tens to the next column. And then you proceed to add from there. You do one plus four plus three, which gets you an eight. So you put an eight in and then a two plus four gets you a six. 6 plus 2 gets you an 8. Don't forget to add in your comma at the end. And now you have added two numbers together. Now I just want to point out here that this is a great time to use those rounding skills that we worked on a couple of days ago to check to see if your answer makes sense logically. So what you can actually do, I'll just draw a line over here, is use rounding to estimate what your answer could be. Now. The easiest way is to just round to the greatest place value, so in this case the 10,000s place. So 62,451 would just round to 60,000. And 24,392 would just round to 20,000. So if you think just in your head, 60,000 plus 20,000 gets me 80,000. Is that reasonable for the answer that I have come up with? Well, yes, it's pretty close to 80,000, and you know that there are more numbers we rounded off, so 86,843 is a reasonable answer. You would get a little more accurate if you were to round to the thousands place. So if you did, so the first number would become 62,000, and our second number would become 24,000. And then when you add those together, you would end up with 86,000 which is a bit more of an accurate estimation for what your answer could be, but either of these is a good way to just do a quick double check of if your answer is reasonable. Then one more thing I wanted to say about adding before we move on to subtracting is if you have two numbers written like this and you have to add them together, there's one very important thing. You're gonna start, first of all, with the larger number on the top, then when you add them together, you need to make sure that you line up the numbers by place value. So make sure that the ones place of both of the numbers is lined up together. So you wanna make sure that your 321 lines up there. I'll do, maybe we'll do it in red for the bad way to do it. Don't do it like this. Oops, not two. Ah, where's my eraser? There it is. Don't do it like that. We have to make sure that the place values are lined up. So the ones place, the tens place, the hundreds place, etc., all line up in order to add correctly. All right, let's move on to subtraction. Subtraction can get a little bit trickier, but if you follow these steps, you should be fine. So just like with addition, you start with the right hand side, you start with the ones place and you simply subtract by column. So let's go back to green because we're going to do it the right way. So you start with the ones column. Five minus three gets you a two. Let's move on to the next column, the tens place. Now what we have here is two minus eight. Now that's a problem because you cannot subtract eight from two unless you're getting into negative numbers, which we're not getting into today. So if you think about it, if you have, let's say, two cookies, 
and you're trying to take eight cookies away from that too, well, you don't have enough. You need to get some more. So what we have to do is do a little bit of borrowing. So what you do is you jump to the next column and you take one away from that column. So you take this six and turn it into a five. Now we have borrowed from that column and we're going to put it into this column. So we're gonna take the two and take the one that we borrowed from the column to the left and put it in front and make that into a 12. Okay, so you're borrowing from the column that is directly to the left of it. Now we can do 12 minus eight and that gets us a four. And then I think the rest is gonna work for us. Five minus three gets us a two. Seven minus two gets us a five. Eight minus five gets us a three. Okay, so just remember if, you're, if you end up in a situation where you have the smaller number on top, you borrow one from the column directly to the left, and then you just put it in front, that one, in front of whatever number you had that was not large enough. And then I just want to go over a situation, one more situation that you might run into. It's going to be lots of borrowing for this question. So if I wanted to do 1,024, oops, forgot my comma, better add that, 1,024 minus 45. I'm going to start on the right-hand side, the ones column, and I already can't do 4 minus 5, okay, because 4 is smaller than 5. So I'm going to start by borrowing from this column. So our 2 is going to become a 1. Then we take the 1 that we borrowed from over there and put it in front and make this a 14. So now we can do 14 minus 5 gets us a 9. Excellent. Then we come to the next column. Now we have another problem. We can't do 1 minus 4. So we're going to need to borrow again. But if you look here, uh-oh, what we have to borrow from, there's nothing there it's a zero. So you might end up in a situation where you don't have a number in the next column to borrow from, but there is a solution because if we jump one more column over, we can borrow from this one at the beginning. So that one is going to become a zero because we've borrowed that one. Oh, tried to fix my zero, didn't make it look like a zero. That's better. And then I can turn this zero into a 10. Now what I can do, now that I have 10 here, is I can borrow from that 10, make it into a nine, and then I can take this one and put the borrowed number in front of it and it becomes an 11. Okay, so sometimes you might have to borrow from farther over. Just make sure that you are carefully following the steps of moving from column to column to column so you don't run into problems. All right, and then we can finish up this question. So we got stuck over here, but now we have all the correct numbers. So we just do our 11 minus four, seven, and then nine, there's nothing to subtract from nine. So we just bring the nine down. Okay, so complicated borrowing, make sure that you're writing out these borrowing steps because it's easy if you try to do it in your head to get lost in all of those steps and forget what you were doing. So make sure that you're writing it out clearly on paper. All right, the slightly tricky questions at the end or mm, sort of middle end of your lesson for today is when they'll give you a, an addition or a subtraction problem, but some of the numbers are going to be missing and it's your job to figure out what those missing numbers are. So the way to do that is to just think through the problem just like if you had all of the numbers there. Okay, so for this one, we have... Oops, nothing in the top of the ones column, and then we have a three. So what you can do is think to yourself, what would make sense to be in that top box in order to end up with a five down below? So you can think to yourself, well, two plus three gets, a, gets you a five, so you can put a two in this box in order to end up with a five down on the bottom. And even if there's only one space missing. Just do a quick double check so we can do two plus three gets you a five and then do the next column as well. Two plus one gets you a three. Yep, it makes sense that a two goes there. All right, let's look at maybe a slightly more challenging one. Starting with the ones column. You can think to yourself, okay, so we have five and we have a blank 
and we have a 1 as our result. Well, now you might be thinking, wait a second, 1 is less than 5. How are we ending up with a 1 down below if there's a 5 already here? I can't do 5 plus something to get a 1. Well, no, you can't. However, you have to remember that sometimes your result is larger than 9, so it could be 10 and up, and then you would carry the number over. So if you think to yourself, well, if I did a 6 plus a 5, what you would end up with is actually an 11. So a 1 would go down here, and a 1 would be carried over to the next column. Okay, so sometimes it, at first glance it might not make sense, but think about all the different scenarios in order to get the numbers that are written down at the bottom. Okay, so then you do 6 plus 5 gets you an 11. Then you think to yourself, 3 plus 1 plus something gets me a 6, so that something must be a 2. Okay, and then one word of warning is that if, I'll do it in red again, if you had decided to start on this side of the equation, or on this side of the addition problem, you would have run into an issue. So it's really, really important to always start on the right-hand side, just like when you're adding and subtracting normally. Because if you had started with this box right here, all this green stuff wouldn't have been there. Well, let's erase it. And you may have thought to yourself, oh, this is a really easy column to do. 3 plus 3 gets me a 6. Well, that would actually be incorrect because, let's see if I can undo, put the green back. You ended up with a 2 there because we had carried a number over at the top. Okay, so just make sure that you start from the right and that should cause, or that should help you avoid any problems with your calculations. All right, so that is it. You will end up with some of these questions in your assignment, ones like these. And my suggestion for that is to rewrite the whole question. I know normally, or what we've been doing so far, is anytime there's a blank you fill in, you just have to write what's in the blank in your notebook. I would like you to write out the whole question just so that you can keep track of what is happening. All right, so make sure that you write out these questions and then fill in the blanks as you go.